Hi, you are watching a brand new episode of the Green New Perspective podcast. My name is Dunya and I will be your guide on this journey to discovering innovative tech aimed at combating climate change. This episode is dedicated to one of the biggest head scratchers in the sustainability game and that is what to do with high-tech waste, especially carbon fiber composites used in everything from airplanes to making sports equipment. They're lightweight, they're durable, but they are a puzzle when we talk about recycling them. That's why we invited Benjamin Sada. He is the founder and CEO of Fairmat, a company that is recycling carbon fiber composites into a totally new material. And this isn't going to be just a story about recycling, it's about revolutionizing how we think about waste, turning a problem into a solution. So if you want to learn more on how we can actually reuse or recycle high-tech into making a totally new circular product, stick around and listen what Ben has to say. Hi, Ben. Welcome to the Green New Perspective podcast. Hi. Thank so, you for having me on the podcast. So for the beginning, can you tell me and our audience what inspired you to start Fairmat and what problem were you trying to solve? Of course, uh, my name is, uh, is Ben. Uh, I started Fairmat three years ago. Actually, it's my second, uh, it's my second startup. Uh, the first one, I uh, launched it uh, 14 years ago. Uh, it is called Explicit. Uh, it is a lightweight aircraft seat company. And for the first 12 years of my career, uh, after the, the age of 23, just after graduation, I, sp I spent my time to, to develop um, the world's lightest aircraft seats in order to, to save fuel in aircraft. Because when you switch the seats, you have a lighter aircraft and you save uh, 2 to 3% of fuel. Uh, the company uh, is a great success. I mean, today, something like 200 aircraft are flying with this technology. But the, the seat was made of uh, carbon fiber composites. And uh, the question was, uh, what are we going to do with these uh, materials after the end of life? And uh, here I discovered that actually this, this material is always going to be landfilled. And we are talking about uh, millions of tons of materials that are going to be landfilled. It is the material of the aircraft, the material of the wind turbine. And so I launched Fermat to, to find an uh, ecological solution to, uh, to avoid this material to be landfilled and also to provide the world to a new materials that has high performance and, uh, and low price in order to, to find a sustainable alternative to, to many virgin materials. And how does your technology actually work? So be before, just, just before discussing about the technology, I mean, the, the concept of recycling has to be, uh, to be studied a little bit. Uh, recycling was invented uh, during World War II uh, because there was a scarcity of materials to, to create ammunition. So that's the beginning of the recycling industry. So it was to, to create an alternative to virgin materials because of, uh, there was no access to virgin materials. So uh, initially, the recycling business was, was not here to, to save CO2. I mean, the, the concept of CO2 did not exist at that time. Uh, so uh, so when we started to recycle advanced materials, the, like carbon fiber composites, the first question is, what is recycling and how, how to do a, a recycling activities that is reducing the emission of CO2. And um, Fermat could only use mechanical, uh, uh, mechanical methods to recycle the materials because today this is the only method that does not emit CO2 or very little because it's just uh, moving engines. So when you start to, to create the technology with this uh, energy consumption in a, a problem in mind, uh, then you ended up to, to use a, mechanical strengths only. And so um, how it works, but it works with uh, robots that actually are able to, to slice uh, real-time uh, composite parts. So like aircraft wings, uh, wind turbine beams, uh, industrial waste. So we were able to slice it at a thickness of 200 micron. And so we create uh, some chips of carbon fiber composite. And those chips, uh, then we, we have developed a, a material science uh, uh, algorithm to, to mix it together in order to, to create uh, a good quality of materials. And uh, you know, what is fun with, uh, with materials is, um, and very difficult is that materials always break at the weak point. So you can, you, if you mix materials, you can mix the best metal in the world. You, you need, you had one bad materials and then it breaks at this, uh, at this uh, point. So, so we had to create uh, an innovation about how to distribute the, the product, um, how to distribute the chips in, in order to have a, a constant quality. And that, that's super tough. 
<laughs> that's very difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it works very well. And uh, this is a, this is Fermat. And what do you make from this new recycled material? Uh, yeah, your question is uh, is very important. Uh, most of the recycling companies, I stop here, so they recycle and they create uh, new materials or uh, a new version of an initial materials. Um, at Fermat, uh, because we have to recycle hundreds of millions of tons of materials. Uh, we could not stop here because if if I just provide uh, customers with my chips, what they're going to do with it? How to make sure that they're going to do uh, th that they will use the chips for uh, a better use? How to make sure they will use the chips to to actually reduce the CO2 emission of uh, of the product they are making? So we have we have developed 50% of the technology is a manufacturing technology, so it's another robots that are able to use the chips and then uh, create. Uh, create a new uh, semi-product or product. And, and what, what we do with the chips? Mm -hmm. We do that. Oh, it's nice. It's a racket. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. this is this is made from uh, aircraft and wind turbine. Uh, we, do, we do a lot of sporting goods. It's a perfect, it's a perfect material for, for sporting goods, for example. And are you collaborating with some bigger companies or, well, they, they don't have to be big. Some companies that are manufacturing goods, so they want to use your material um, to create their products or whatever. Of course, I mean, we, we are at the end, we are a producer of materials and a supplier of semi-product or a manufacturing technology that they can use in their own factory. And we work with many brands uh, in sporting goods. Today, we have 15 customers worldwide. Um, we've just recently opened the US and we have uh, five customers in the US and uh, 10 other customers are, are mainly in Europe. Uh, so we work with a paddle racket, with ski, in sole shoe, uh, you know, carbon fiber is doing really great in uh, in sporting, in running shoes, actually. So we, we work on that. Uh, we also work in the electronics good uh, industry. Uh, you want to see? Mm -hmm. I want to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is, I mean, this is my only two, two surprise for the for this podcast. So here you, you can see it's a, it's a reinforcement uh, that we do for, um, so the company can uh, then put um, electronics uh, component into it. This one mm -hmm. is for, for doing a weight scales of a smart weight scales of a European company called WeThings, and uh, it's pretty cool. And do you feel like the interest in recycled or new materials are growing with you know uh, companies like like you mentioned, or are they still buying some limited quantities of those materials so they can basically um, PR themselves as doing something sustainable and not actually, you know, uh, including the sustainability practices uh, within the, the, well, let's say like bigger production. Alors, as a startup company, first, uh, there is no interest for us to, to work on the, what, what you call greenwashing, actually. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be greenwashing, but I had, um, I had uh, in my previous podcast episode, I have a couple of guests who were making recycled materials. I can mention one company, they're called Renuso. It's a Swedish company that recycles cotton and viscose into a new, pro new product, new material that is called circulose. And okay. they were, they were cl collaborating with some of the biggest bigger fashion brands, but they were buying smaller quantities and they were not complaining. They were really grateful, grateful for those kind of co collaboration, but they still had the, um, let's say, difficulties to survive on the market because, you know, they're still not buying enough for them to, you know, to grow as a company and to produce more material, which is, well. So I think, uh, so it's a very good question. So, so today I can only talk about my company. So for Fermat, um, we started to, to sell uh, our product last year, and uh, we have uh, sold uh, the equivalent of 300 tons of, uh, of materials. So it's, it's a big figure. I mean, we were very happy with that. Uh, of course, we, we want to grow much more. That, that's raised a, a very important question. And uh, as a repeat founder of a deep tech startup, uh, deep tech business requires high volume. It requires mass application. Otherwise, there's, there's no way uh, your business model will, uh, will repay the investment of the, of the factory and so on. And you can see it. I mean, the, the, the most known deep tech startup is, is Tesla. I mean, it's not because Tesla is aiming at uh, being bigger than uh, Ford or Volkswagen or big groups. And uh, it is the same for deep tech startup. I mean, you can only exist if you aim at big and uh, at being big. And um, the, the advantages of uh, recycling carbon fiber composite is the, the quantity, uh, the 200 million tons of materials to recycle. I mean, the feedstock is big enough to, to be able to, uh, to, to invest into uh, innovation and disruptive uh, business model. Mm -hmm. 
And where did you see some challenges while developing the company? There, there's a lot of challenges. We, we want to, um, so today, most of the manufacturing is made in Asia. So uh, even if we recycle in uh, Europe, for example, or soon it will be recycled in the US, we, we are shipping the product in Asia. Uh, what we want to, to provide our customers is a, with a, a multi-local um, business that, that allows them to have a, a low CO2 footprint everywhere in the world. So, uh, for example, a big challenge is uh, Fermat to be big has to be uh, in Europe, in US, and in Asia. And, I mean, it's very, very difficult for a startup to establish already one factory is a big challenge. But here we have to establish one factory and, and present everywhere worldwide. Otherwise, the, the environmental impact will be reduced. And uh, to going back to your initial question, uh, my vision is that it's only like startup with a real positive and strong impact on the environment that will survive the next 10 years. So, so we, we must provide this uh, strong positive impact. So we must to be uh, present in Asia, in the US and in Europe. And that, that's, that's a pretty big challenge. Uh, no one wants that to, to, to be in the, in the backyard. <laughs> that's not possible. Yeah, I have to say the, the most frequent thing that I hear from guests here on the podcast is that col collaboration is one of the most important things when we're talking about clean tech space. So yeah, that is something that everyone is basically, you know, just repeating. And, uh, and large corporate are really ready to collaborate to, to solve that issue. That's another reality. Um, again, no one, no one wants that in the in this backyard. So, so, so everyone is uh, is actively looking for solution. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what I wanted to ask is, since this podcast is sponsored by a marketing agency, and the other thing that I also heard here on the podcast that is frequently mentioned is how uh, clean tech companies are actually communicating uh, their efforts and what they're doing, the new technologies, how they're, you know, place, placing themselves in the market. So what challenges did you have there with Fairmat? Uh, because you're doing something that is truly innovative. Um, do you feel like people understand what you're doing, what your collaborators or companies that you're working with uh, had, did they had any challenges, you know, uh, when when you approach them with your technology, but the, the, we're facing so many challenges in that field. First, uh, what we do is complicated. So uh, I mean, uh, it's a big challenge for a deep tech startup. Um, we are just saying we do recycling carbon fiber companies is not true because we do the manufacturing, uh, but we create a new material. So we are closing a loop, but uh, it's a complicated loop. So <laughs> it's complicated. So communicated on a, to, to, to achieve communication on a complicated business is not easy. Uh, the second thing is, um, at least in Europe, but I think it's the same in the US. Um, the, when you say you are doing recycling, people think it is cheap. You know, it's a low quality or low cost uh, product. Uh, of course, Fermat is providing an uh, extremely good uh, price to performance ratio. But uh, when we do a sporting goods, usually we ended up into the best uh, sporting goods category. So when we do ski, we do ski with the best brand in the world. When we do a paddle racket, we do the best paddle racket in the world. Uh, pickleball, uh, all these sports. And, um, for the first time, Fermat is providing uh, recycled materials that are super high-end. And uh, it's one of our pillars is to improve consumer goods in general. And uh, this is a big challenge to communicate on that. How to explain that uh, the new top quality is coming from a recycling industry. That's a, that's a big challenge to explain to people. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When people hear recycled, they think about something that has less of a worth than virgin material. So yeah, I get you. But did you did you find any strategies to be uh, successful there? I think the, the best strategy is to, to let our customers uh, talk for us. If you look at the WeSync's project, so WeSync is, um, is uh, one of the best uh, companies in, uh, in Europe for um, Illstech. Elstec. So they, they do a smart scale that can uh, measure your, your heart beating and uh, many other uh, very important things. And uh, our product ended up in the most expensive uh, weight scales and uh, the one, the product that they sell the most in the US and so on. So, so I think the, the, as Fermat CEO, I cannot do more for that. I can, I can just uh, sell my products and uh, equip uh, my customers on their best uh, line of equipment. And this is what is happening in the sporting goods 
in the electronics goods, we really ended up all the time in IN product. And that, that, that I think that, that speaks for itself. And uh, what emerging applications or technologies are you most excited about for recycling carbon fiber? For Fermat recycling, uh, F Fermat recycled uh, carbon fiber composite is aimed at uh, replacing uh, other advanced materials, not necessarily the, the virgin uh, carbon fiber. Um, let's, do, do you want to fly in a recycled aircraft? That, that, uh, an aircraft is not, is not here to be recycled, it's here to be efficient, safe. And uh, with the aircraft, we can do plenty of other goods that would be useful for, uh, for consumer. So uh, uh, we aim at replacing uh, uh, very polluting aluminum grades, uh, very polluting stainless steel, some glass fiber. Um, and um, we see our futures in the several business, energy business, uh, in some uh, wind turbine components, uh, automotive business, on all the battery casings, uh, skid plate, all, all this kind of part that has a huge impact on the consumption of the, of the car. And of course, uh, we'll keep growing in, uh, in the field of sporting goods because uh, we're doing so good already and we want to expand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you have that in mind to work in sporting goods or did that just happen? It happens. Uh -huh. <laughs> it happens. Um, I, mean, I mean, like, uh, like Fermat, it happens to me. I mean, uh, we, we, I started just after graduation, I created an aircraft seat suppliers with two of the friends. Uh, we aim at uh, saving CO2. Uh, uh, 14 years later, uh, I, I have two kids, so now I aim at uh, providing them a, a better planet uh, for them to grow in a, in a good environment. And uh, we ended up with a Fermat uh, advanced recycling technology. Yeah, well, you know, that's a good motive to have. The best. Um, yeah. Uh, what advice would you give to other people who want to start a clean tech company? Like that, I, I have three, three, three advice. Um, so first, I mean, you need to be able to work with uh, large companies. So, and that, that's really a, a specific job. Uh, large companies is a, a complicated uh, world with uh, huge opportunities. But also, if you, if you take the wrong, uh, the, the wrong path, you can lose uh, years of work and be very disappointed or frustrated. So um, with the large companies, is uh, to make sure that your business model is what they want. And uh, if there is no fit, uh, you need to drop fast, very fast. I mean, uh, it's okay. That's life. There, there is plenty of companies uh, in the world. Uh, if you cannot work with this one, but you will find to, uh, a path to work with another one. But be very clear about your business model, uh, how you want to, to make money, uh, how you want to help them, and be sure that what you are doing is sustainable. So um, this is what, what we do for the sporting goods. I mean, we, we need to avoid to work with brands or companies that, that, that will make maybe a, a use, but not for long term and so on. So, so do, do not hesitate to, to be very focused on the, the right partners. Uh, the second thing is, uh, we, we discussed it al al already, is uh, aiming at big. If, if there is factories involved in your technology, you need to, to look for a market in uh, hundreds of million uh, euro minimum. Uh, my previous company, Explicit, uh, the actual market was between 200 and 500 million euro per year. This is too small. Because uh, even if you do 10%, it's 20 million, 50 million, it's too small for a big factory and so on. So you need to, to aim at market in, uh, in billions per year. So uh, that's, uh, you need to be ready to, to tackle this kind of challenges, but, but this is the only way to, to provide a, a successful uh, business model for your investors. So that, that's my two, uh, two big advice. And the third advice, of course, is uh, you, you're probably a, a genius in your field. You're probably uh, super motivated, uh, but you, you won't solve everything. You, you won't solve every problem of your customers. So make sure you, 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 you work on the actual problem your, your technology is designed to solve. Because uh, people, uh, as soon as they understand you're smart, they will ask you like, okay, can you do that? And I press on that and reduce that. And, and uh, you, you, you have to stay focused, of course. So that, yeah, that's my humble, humble advice. Very difficult to, to apply when you, when you are inside the company. <laughs> well, thank you. Great advices. Um, I wanted to ask you, and where do you see the most potential for growth and impact in the sustainable materials overall, not just the one that you're making? So if you, if you look at what consumed today uh, in terms of weight, the, the, the three industries that are consuming most of the materials today is building industry, automotive industry, and electronics uh, industry. So, I mean, I, I don't know the future, but uh, what I can say is uh, if we want to reduce CO2 emission or uh, we want to improve the impact at, at, at scale for the health, uh, these three industries, they have to, to, to change everything they do. They, that's not, that's not, I mean, 
Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Uh, you can look at everything you want. If uh, the building industry is automotive industry, electronics good uh, industry is not changing the way they are manufacturing today, the impact at the earth level will be nothing. So uh, at least because I am uh, positive and I think that uh, we will reach some targets and we will improve the situation, I, uh, I can say that I think there is a revolutions to come in this uh, in these industries. Let's stay positive. Like some of, some of our guests here said, uh, uh, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> I guess that's the good good phrase well, to use here. That, there's no reason to be cautious. I mean, it's just optimism. You don't know, think so? Let's be, let's, be, <laughs> let's, be, let's, be, let's be completely optimistic. I mean, that, that, okay. that, 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 it's okay. So where can people find you, your company, on your social media, the, give us the links on your, of your website? And if you have some uh, clean tech, climate tech, nature tech, biotech, sustainable materials, communities that you would like to share for people who are in the industry or for, pe for people who would like to discover the industry, um, please do share for us. We will going to link all of this in the description of the episode. Uh, the the community I'm uh, I'm happy to share that no, no, we, we so is uh, first if people want to to join us uh, we are recruiting a lot uh, we have uh, an office in Paris in France but uh, right now we are also recruiting in uh, Utah uh, in Salt Lake City for our new plant so we're looking for a talent use uh, project manager uh, workers uh, industrial engineers. Uh, spawning good experts to to help us to to build our presence in uh, in the US and in uh, in Salt Lake City in Utah. Um, our website is uh, www.fermat.tech, uh, and we have a, a LinkedIn community uh, just just to join uh, Fermat uh, on uh, on LinkedIn, and uh, and you can uh, you can join our our community of uh, of followers. Thank you, Ben. This has been an informative conversation on what you're producing. Um, I wish you all the best with the uh, U.S. launch. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it's been a, it has been a pleasure to, to be with you today. You were watching Green New Perspective podcast, and now is the perfect time for me to introduce you to our wonderful sponsors, the New Perspective, a Boston-based marketing agency working with clean tech clients only. And if you want to learn how they're helping clean tech companies grow, please check out the info in the description of this episode. And if you want to help us grow, consider liking, sharing, subscribing to our channel on your favorite streaming platform. It really means the world to us. Um, thank you for being with me, and see you next time. Bye.